time again You have proven You do just what you say Though the storms may come And the winds may blow I'll remain steadfast And let my heart learn When you speak the word It will come to pass Great is your faith
from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. God, your word, your name is to be praised. And Father, wherever we are now, we lift up our hands to you, just telling you how wonderful you are, just telling you how great you are, thanking you, God, for another day of life, health, and strength. Thank you, dear God, that you've kept us yet another week, and you've kept us yet another day. Father, we thank you that we still have the blood still running warm in our veins, and that we have the very activities of our lives. Father, we don't take it for granted, Father, but we thank you, God, that we cannot make our transition from this life to the next until our purpose here on earth is fulfilled. Father, great is your faithfulness to us, God. Father, we thank you this morning for you being a great God. Father, we thank you for being a good God. We thank you for being a good Father. And we give you glory. We give you honor. Father, if it wasn't for you, where would we be? And Father, we just tell you thank you. We just tell you thank you. And we just lift you up, God. Father, we just glorify your holy name and we just speak well of you, God. Before we come asking for anything, we just speak well of your name and tell you how great you are, how faithful you are, how wonderful you are, how marvelous you are, how sovereign you are. We thank you for being the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We thank you for being the great I am. We thank you for being everything that we need. We thank you for being everything that we need and desire. Father, we thank you for you just being the God that you are. And Father, we ask now that you would, your spirit will be made manifested wherever we are, as, we, as we're watching, as we're here, as we're listening. Father, we just ask that your spirit would be made manifested, that we would feel your spirit. Father, that you would uh, release an anointing wherever we are right now in the name of Jesus. The anointing that destroys the yokes. The anointing that sets the captives free. The anointing that makes crooked ways straight. The anointing, God. Hallelujah. 
Fresh oil, dear God, in the name of Jesus. A fresh oil from heaven, God. Father, we need you even now, God. Oh, Father, hide me so far behind the cross that they see none of me. But yet, Father, they see all of you. I decrease now that thou mayest increase in me. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you, dear God, that in the midst of our storm, good God Almighty, God, that we can still trust you. And that we're, oh my God, that you're holding on to us, even in the midst of our tribulations. And we love you. We magnify you. And we give your name the glory. We give your name the honor. And we tell you how wonderful you are. We tell you how great you are. And how marvelous and wonderful you are. It's in your name and through your power. And in the consciousness of Christ Jesus that it is so. So it is. And so we let it be. And we say amen and amen. Amen. Listen, welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to uh, another Sunday service of Beyond Church. I am so glad that you decided to be with us today. There are millions, I mean millions of services going on even right now at the 11 o'clock hour. But I'm so glad that you found it, uh, uh, not robbery, to be with us. And I don't take it for granted. Um, I don't take it for granted whatsoever, so I just want to tell you thank you very much. So listen, uh, if you are a member of Beyond Church, or if you are one of our, if you know, if you're a member of Beyond Church, you know what time it is. And if you are our guest, let me tell you what time it is. It's time to go ahead and hit those like buttons. It's go, time to go ahead and hit those um, hearts and those laughing and smiling faces. Why? To let me know that you're here. Let me know that you're in, that you're in, that you're in the group, that you're watching us. And not only that, um, there's that share button on the bottom of your screen. Go ahead and click that or even start a watch party. Um, let people know that we're on because we're going to be talking about hope is being the anchor of our soul. We're going to continue our series on hope and understanding that hope. Thank you all so much for sharing. Thank you all so much um, for reacting. Um, we're going to be talking about hope is the anchor for the soul. So I'm going to give you a minute to go ahead and um, hit that share button, hit that watch party button. And then remember, as I'm preaching, as I'm teaching, uh, those hearts and those uh, 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 smiley faces and all of those things are like an amen. As we're doing this virtually, that's like you physically hear saying amen and that you agree and that you're listening and that you're hearing. And so it helps us. It helps us. Uh, helps us, the preachers, to um, let to remind us that, that you're right there. You are right there with us. Amen. Amen. So I am so glad again um, that we are here with another uh, Sunday service of Beyond Church. And so we are going to um, go ahead and get right into the word. And uh, the song we heard is, is God is how faithful he is and how wonderful he is. And, and it was talking about the anchor. I was talking about the anchor and how we can anchor. Uh, he's our anchor in the time of storms and, and, all, and all of those things. And he guides us and he leads us. Uh, the Bible says he leads us into all truth. And we're so glad about that. We're so glad about that. So let's listen. Let's just jump into our word because I believe that there is a word um, from the Lord. Um, and again, thank you all for watching and thank you all for sharing. So here it is on a on a cruise ship. Have you ever been on a cruise ship or any type of ship, large vessel or what have you? Um, uh, one of the things that you'll notice is when they dock um, uh, and you watch them, um, they will um, do a couple of things. You know, they do their uh, pre pre docking check and all of this, and so they throw some ropes and things um, onto the shore uh, so that the people that are on the shore can go ahead and tie tie up the boat. Uh, tie up the ship so that the ship does not uh, so that the ship does not move. And not only do they do that, um, but they throw down an anchor. They put down um, this anchor in order to support this huge ship, in order to support this massive ship from um, not moving and from not drifting away. Um, and even when the waves come, uh, as they come in, as the tide comes in, uh, the the, uh, the anchor will help to make sure that the boat or the ship does not move. And in, in the off chance that a storm comes, um, this anchor is, is, is holding, is gripping the, uh, the bedrock, it's gripping uh, the, 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 the uh, bottom of the sea in order for the ship not to be taken away or in order for the ship not to be moved away from the position or from the dock of where it is. And so I want to talk to us, uh, talk to you all. I want to uh, talk, we want to have this talk about, uh, as I said, hope uh, being our anchor. With hope 
being our anchor. And so um, we're going to um, go into uh, Hebrews um, chapter 6, um, verses um, 19 and 20. And um, if you don't have your Bibles, uh, don't log off. Uh, don't worry whatsoever. I've got you covered right here in there. So Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 through 20. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, 19, 19 through 20. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 through 20. And it's right there for you. Um, so you don't have to leave and um, go to your Bible app. And it's in the New Living Translation. And it says, <clears throat> this, is, this hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. Uh, I think I put it in a different version. I don't want to confuse you all. Uh, Hebrews 6, 19 through 20. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Verse 20, where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And so that's where we're going to take our text from this morning. I'm so used to saying afternoon, but this morning. And so uh, two weeks ago during the talk, when we were talking about uh, hope, when we were discussing hope, we added or uh, we, we came up with a new definition or, or, or extended or enhanced the definition of hope. Um, and so we said that hope was a confident expectation that God will perform his promises as we patiently endure, right? Y'all remember that? And so we said a confident expectation, hope equals a confident expectation that God will perform his promises as we or as I patiently endure. There are going to be times that you'll find yourself, and I'm getting ahead of myself, in the midst of a storm, and we want it to be over so bad. But we have to understand that we have to patiently endure, because in the midst of the storm, it does not mean that God is not going to perform his promises it just simply means that there's something that we have to get out of this storm. And if you're not patient enough, and if you don't endure that storm, then you won't be able to get the lessons and the blessings that you find inside the storm. Because you have to understand that lessons and blessings can come in the midst of the storm. A lot of times we want to wait until the storm is over, or we think that we have to wait until the storm is over in order for us to get uh, what God has for us. But I'm here to let you know that right in the midst of the storm, God is able to perform his promises. Good God, I'm getting ahead of myself here. And so there, as I have said just a minute ago, there are going to be times in our life that we find ourselves in the midst of a storm. We're going to find ourselves um, dealing with heavy rains, uh, uh, torrential downpour, and, and it's going to seem like there's hurricane winds in our life. And it's sad to say that some of us have been or will be pulled away by one storm of our life or another. And we're going to be pulled away because we have not solidified our stance with an anchor. And so if you, if, if a boat, if a ship is in the midst of, a, uh, of the sea or even on at the dock, and if it does not, no matter how big the ship is, if the ship does not put down an anchor, it will eventually slowly drift away from the shore. It will sure, good God Almighty, it will surely drift away from the thing that they were supposed to be secured to. And so it's so good, God Almighty. So it's so important that we understand God, how important this anchor is because the anchor does not only keep the, the ship from, uh, uh, from moving away, but it helps that when the winds come, that the, that the storm, that the, the, the ship does not move way, sway back and forth. And so that when the waves come, it helps that the, the ship doesn't move up and down. So it's so important that we have a stand so that we put down an anchor. 
and not only put down the anchor, but put down the right anchor in the right place. Everyone's storm is going to look different. Everyone's storm is going to look different. You may, you may look at somebody and think that everything is sunshine and great weather because that's the way they portray themselves. And it's okay, but, they are, but when they get inside of their vehicle, when they get home, when they get to a place of, uh, of, 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 of where it's not comfortable for them, when they get back, when they get to a place by themselves, it, then all of a sudden the tears begin to flow. The depression gets to set in. The anxiety hits. The fear hits. The worry hits. And it's just like a, a whole tsunami in their life. But you would never know by just looking at them. And so it's so important that we are sensitive uh, to individuals and we understand that we treat everyone with love because you never know what that person is going through. And so when we put ourselves, when we put things into perspective and when we put ourselves uh, in other people's shoes and understand that, you know, maybe they could be going some, they could be having a terrible day. And so, no, but I'm not going to respond to them in the way that they're responding to me. Why? Because they could be going through hell right now in their lives. And the only thing that they may need is a smile. The only thing that they may need is a, I hope your day gets better. I'm off the subject here. But we understand that everyone's storm looks different. And so what might be a little storm to you this might be a large storm for somebody else. Amen. But it's good to know that we have this hope that anchors our soul. The true question is, what kind of anchor did you throw down? Ask yourself, what kind of anchor did you throw down? down. When we talk about anchors, there are uh, two, uh, two types of anchors. Of course, there are different ones. They, they come in different sizes and shapes and, and made of different things, but the basics or the basis of anchors can be divided into two different types of anchors. The first one anchor is <clears throat> what they call a temporary anchor. And a temporary anchor can be moved and carried on to the boat or the vessel that um, is being docked. So it's, it's those ones that you see that, you know, from on the cruise ships and things that you see um, uh, that they pull up because they can pull it up and they can stow it on the boat. So these are what they call a temporary anchor. <clears throat> when it comes to a temporary anchor, you can dock it and pick it up and move out or move on at any point in time. Oftentimes, people talk about uh, and sing about, you know, my soul is anchored in the Lord or is your soul anchored in God. But the reality is they are utilizing the wrong anchor. What do I mean? Yes, a temporary anchor has power, has great power and will hold the ship or our soul from moving. And I'm going to get to soul in a minute. And so the temporary anchor, yes, it's, 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 it's heavy. It's made of metal and it grips the ground, uh, grips the bedrock, grips the sea, the seabed. Uh, and it, it will cause, uh, cause us or the ship. It helps, it helps to resist the winds and the tide. And, and, and also helps uh, the up and down movement of the waves that can come in our life. But the problem with a temporary anchor is that I can pick it up and move my vessel or move my soul to at any place at any time. And I can begin to run at any moment. That's the problem with the temporary anchor. And I know that y'all are like, well, what's the problem with that? What's going on? If you stay with me for a minute, I'm going to help you understand what I'm talking about. So even though I know that there is a lesson or blessing in my storm, if I'm operating with this temporary anchor, then I can just pick it up 
and run. And I may outrun the storm for a moment, but because I packed up and ran before I even got the lesson or learned or got the blessing out of it, I'm going to eventually find myself in this storm all over again. And I'm going to do the try. I'm going to try to do the same thing over and over and over is I'm going to try to pick up and run. So when you find yourself in the midst of a storm, some of us just get up and we just we just run because I can't deal with it or I don't want to deal with it. When you're dealing with disagreements or when you're having an argument or when you're when things in your life are not going the way that you desire for it to go, oftentimes we pick up our anchor and say, you know what? Where was God in all all of this. What happened? And it's simply because we have thrown down the wrong anchor. And because we're using this temporary anchor, we find ourselves losing grip of our very reality. Because we threw down this anchor that it's not made to withstand long periods of storm. It's not able, or it's not uh, made to withstand um, how the intensity of storms that are going to arise in our lives. Yes, we're going to have some small storms, but there are going to be times in our life that we have some intense storm, and this temporary anchor is not going to be able to hold our soul. Yes, we have this hope that anchors our soul, but if we're putting down this this temporary anchor in God, then all of a sudden when the storms of life come, we find ourselves running away. We find ourselves not wanting to deal with or not dealing with the problem, not dealing with the storm, not dealing with the trial, not dealing with the tribulation. A temporary anchor will not hold up in the severe storms of our lives. And if you have not experienced a severe storm in your life, just keep living. Just keep living. And I guarantee you there's going to be a storm that comes in your life that it's going to seem like it's going to knock you off of your feet. And here's the thing. But because you have you had this, uh, uh, this temporary anchor, you're going to find yourself slowly drifting Away. You're going to find yourself uh, seasick in, in, in the sea of life. You're going to find yourself um, having all of, these, all of these sicknesses and things because you have put down an anchor that was only you, that's only supposed to be temporary. You put down an anchor that, 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 that you can just simply pull up and pick up and run away. But, but what, ha what happens when we find ourselves in those tough storms? In those tough times of life, we have to remember that there's another type of anchor that I believe that the, the, the scripture text is talking about. And they call this the permanent anchor. Now, I didn't make this up. I researched it. I looked it up. Um, it's called a permanent anchor. And they call this anchor um, a, a, a mooring block. And, and, and permanent anchors are used when a floating thing must be kept in place for a very long time. They are used to anchor light ships. They are used to anchor navigation buoys uh, in the sea. They are used to anchor thing, uh, uh, pretty big things or things that are very significant and that are going to help um, help uh, see or help uh, the, with direction and things of that nature. And this, the anchor, this anchor, this permanent anchor that holds these things uh, must be able to withstand all types of weather, even the worst of storms. And this is the anchor that holds us. This should be the anchor. This is the anchor, this permanent anchor. This is the anchor that the Bible, that Hebrews is talking about. That this anchor here, this permanent anchor, here it is, when, 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 it, when, when this anchor is not easily moved, when they need to move these things that this, anchor, that this anchor is attached to, whatever that anchor is attached to, when they desire to move it, they have to find a specialist. They have to find someone in big, huge machinery in order to move it because the, when they planted it there, they did not intend for it to be moved whatsoever. And so when they find themselves having to move this thing, or let's just say this light ship or this navigation buoy, it's because they're putting this thing out of commission. This thing is no longer, um, can, it's, it's going to be utilized. It's no longer going to work. And so, if the, so the Bible lets us know that we, that we, that this hope, 
that this hope that we have is the anchor for our soul. And so this anchor must be able to withhold or withstand in the midst of all of the weather, of, in the midst of all of the, this heavy storm that we find ourselves in. This is the anchor that will hold us when I'm walking. Even the Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. This permanent anchor is an anchor that's going to hold us when our loved one transitions. This anchor is the one that's going to hold us when we find out ourselves back up against the wall, stuck between a rock and a hard place. This permanent anchor is going to be the one that uh, that says that I'm still going to trust God despite what the doctors have said. Uh, this anchor is the one that's going to hold us when all hell has broken loose in our lives. This anchor is going to be the one that when, uh, when it seems like everything and everyone's against me, this is the anchor that's going to hold. This anchor is going to hold when our jobs are lost. This is the anchor that's going to grip the bedrock of Jesus. Huh? Who is this God that we serve? This is the God. This is God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. When you put down this permanent anchor, it's going to grip the rock of Jesus Christ. He either by the, the song said he's the rock of ages. Huh? And this is this is what this anchor is going to hold. Sometimes some people put their anchor in different things. Let me go back real quick. This temporary anchor, people will find themselves with this temporary anchor. And because God God did not do what they wanted him to do when they wanted him to do it, how they wanted them to, how they wanted him to do it. They are going to pick up their anchor and they're going to find themselves anchoring into something that they have no business anchoring into. They're going to find themselves anchored into alcoholism. They're going to find themselves anchored into a, 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 an unhealthy relationship. They're going to find themselves anchored into drugs. They're going to find themselves anchored into all types of things but Jesus because they were able to put uh, pick up this anchor and find somewhere else to go. So that's why it is so important that we put down this permanent anchor. This permanent anchor says, yea, though you slay me, yet, yea, though they slay me, yet will I trust you. This is the same anchor that Job had when he lost everything, when he lost his kids, when he lost his money, when he lost his house. He lost everything when his body was struck with pain, with all types of boils. He had this anger for his soul, and he had this anger that was found in God. And we ask yourself this morning, where is your anchor? What are you anchored in? What are you, is your soul anchored in the Lord? Because if it's not, because listen, the lad though, the thing that I read in the Bible is that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So no matter what storms arise in my life, huh, no matter what comes up, what comes or what goes, huh, I know that the, even though the winds are rough, huh, and I know that even though the storm is great, I know that my, I have put down this permanent anchor in God. And I know that he's never going to leave me nor forsake me. And so when I've lost everything in my life, I know that God is my anchor. Ask yourself, what anchor have you put down? What is this anchor that you have put down? And the thing about this anchor is that it's rarely moved. Like I said, and we have to we have to be able to understand that that's when we say we stand firm on the word of God. And the anchor, get this, the anchor has different, has, it's, it's, it's suspended by a chain, by different links. And so I can, I can say that these links are, are, are my prayer life. These links to that anchor to, in order for it to get down to the bottom, good God Almighty, in order for it to get down to the bottom, of, of, of the sea, I, I have to, it's, it's connected to my prayer life. It's connected to my praise and my worship. God Almighty. It's connected to me reading the scriptures and studying the scriptures. It's connected to my stillness and my silence. It's connected to my evangelism. It's connected to, listen, it is connected to something. It's connected to other people. It's connected. Good God Almighty. It's connected. And so all of our spiritual practices and our spiritual disciplines are connected to this anchor. And if, and if you, and if we, uh, if we don't utilize or if we decide that, you know, 
praise and worship is really not my thing, so I'm just going to go ahead and maybe cut that out. Listen, you're cutting a piece of the link that is, uh, that is having you to be anchored in the Lord. And so you have to understand that all of these things are working together for our good. And so when I'm praising, when I'm worshiping, when I'm reading my Bible, when I'm fellowshipping with the saints, when I'm evangelizing, when I'm sitting in the stillness and the silence, when I'm doing all of these things, it's, 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 it's solidifying my anchor. It's solidifying what it is or who it is that I am anchored in. What anchor did you put down? Whatever you're going through in life right now, whatever challenges that you're having right now, understand that when you're anchored in God, I know, I know that it seems like God has forsaken you sometimes. I know that it's hard to feel sometimes like God is there. But when the, when, 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 when the captain of the ship puts down the anchor, when the individual that puts down the permanent anchor, the thing is that they, they have enough faith. Good God Almighty. They have enough faith to believe that whatever comes, however crazy this storm is, However strong the storm is, and get this, even if something hits it, that when they go back to see it, it's still going to be there. And so you may not be able to see your way through the storm. But one thing I know is that I'm anchored. Good God Almighty, let me sit here. I'm anchored in the Lord. I'm anchored in the promises of God. I'm anchored in this thing because I have this hope. This confident expectation. I have this faith just that to know that God said he, God will do what he said that he was, he's going to do. Even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of your relationship, even in the midst of your storm, even in the midst of your trial, even in the midst of whatever is transpiring in your life, I need for you to understand that when you put down that permanent anchor, God said that he will do it and he's going to perform it before. He's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Meaning if God said it, then he's going to do it. He's not going to turn his back on you. Absolutely not. But there are times that we have to endure in this storm. In the storm of our life. Why? Because there's something that we have to get out of it. We've got to stop asking God to get, deliver us up out of a storm. But we instead change our prayer life to say, God, I know that I'm in the midst of this storm. I know that I put down my permanent anchor. So what is it that you're trying to get me to learn in this storm? What is it that I'm supposed to get out of this storm right here? And so when you change your way of thinking, when you change your way of praying, then you're able to say, God, I know that I'm supposed to be in this storm. So whatever it is, I know that you're going to deliver me out of this. But in the midst of it, I need to see and I need to hear what you're saying to this church. To me, my God, what, what, what storm are you in now? And what anchor have you put down? This permanent anchor says, God, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going to come out of this. But I do know that I'm anchored in you. And when we you find yourself in a place of uncertainty, you can lean on in the, the fact and you can rest assured. The song said, be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. And this rock is Jesus. 
I can go to, you can go and find all the self-help books you want. They're great and they help us. You can go to all the counseling that you want. They, they're great and they help us. But if you're not gripped to the solid rock, which is Jesus, you're going to find yourself drifting away. And drifting away and drifting away. And then all of a sudden you'll find yourself out in the midst of the sea wondering, when did this happen? How am I so far away from where I started? It's because you didn't put down the permanent anchor. What are you afraid of? Thank you, God. What are you afraid of? Why? Because it's a choice to put down the permanent anchor or to put down a temporary. It's a choice. Yes, there have been times people have let you down in your life, but God will never, ever let you down. And what is this anchor for? This anchor is for our souls. The soul, soul is, 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 is our consciousness. It's our awareness of what's happening around us and what's going on around us. The Bible says, and Adam became a living soul. So your soul is that which reminds you, that which is, it, 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 it encompasses our feelings, our senses. It encompasses all of, all of that feelings and your senses and all of this. And so... The thing is that our souls must be anchored to something. Because if your soul is not anchored, when you're feeling depressed, you'll drift away. When the odds are stacked against you because you're feeling down, you're going to drift away. When your family is getting on your nerves, and you just need it. You'll find yourself drifting away. When there's more bills and there's money, you begin to rationalize and try to figure out. Are you asking God, okay, what, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing what? Your soul has to be anchored. And the Bible says, and I, let, me, let me read this, and I'm done. Let me read this in, in the Amplified Version. When I study, I like to read the Amplified Version of the Bible. Uh, as well. Um, when, 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 let me put this right in here for you all to see. And so the amplified version, it just simply does that. It just amplifies the text, right? And so the amplified says, this hope, this confident assurance, and for us, we said that this hope is a confident expectation that God will do uh, or perform what he said he would do, his promises, uh, as we patiently endure. So this hope this confident assurance we have as an anchor of the soul. Get this, it cannot slip and it cannot break down under whatever pressure bears upon it. So whatever pressure is in your life, good God Almighty, this anchor will hold. It won't slip and it can't break down under whatever pressure Pairs upon it. It's a safe and steadfast hope that, that enters within, within the veil of the heavenly temple, the most holy place in which the very presence of God dwells. Good God Almighty, I wish I had time for us to understand what this is talking about because before Jesus, good God Almighty, before Jesus came and, 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 and lived a sinless, perfect life, the priest had to go behind in the Old Testament. The priest had to go behind the veil, had to go behind the most holies of holies. And that's what they said the very presence of God was. And so the priest would go behind the holies of holies. He would go behind the veil once a year to atone for the sins of the people. And what happened is that they had to tie a rope to the priest's foot just in case the priest was not living, uh, was not living the right life. Because entering into the presence of God uh, and, and your life wasn't right, uh, they, they, would, they would just fall and die. And so they had to pick, pick, pull them out. And so this is saying to the Bible, so right now, just that backdrop is saying that, that it's this hope, this is a steadfast hope that enters within the veil meeting. 
that this hope goes beyond goes beyond what we physically see. This hope goes beyond what, how, what we physically feel. This hope goes beyond all of that. This hope transcends your feelings. This hope transcends what's, what's happening. This hope transcends what's going on right now. This hope transcends uh, the very thing, the very what they call the facts of a matter. This thing transcends uh, the doctor's report. This thing transcends a recession. This thing transcends a pandemic. This thing, this hope transcends Good God Almighty, the very precious of your life. And it says when Jesus has entered in advance as a forerunner for us, saying that he has already performed these things. He's already delivered us. That's why we say we waiting, we, we await the very manifestation because God, because Jesus has already went ahead of us. God Almighty. And Jesus can see us on the other side of the storm. Good God Almighty. I'm done. What? What is it? What is it? What is it that you're anchored to? What do you find yourself anchored to now? What anchor did you put down? The permanent anchor or the temporary anchor. The temporary anchor, it's okay. But you have to make a conscious decision. A conscious uh, uh, decision to say, you know what? I'm going to put this anchor here. <clears throat> and I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart. And I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. But in all of my ways, I'm going to acknowledge him. And he's going to direct my path. This permanent anchor says, everything may not turn out the way that I want it to turn out. But I know that God has the best for me. I know that God has my best interest at heart. I know that I, I might be feeling down and out, but I know that God is right there with me. And that God is right there for me. So I need to talk to somebody real quick right now just to let you know that it's time to throw away your temporary anchor. Your temporary anchor says, when I'm mad at God, I'll move on and find something or somebody else. Your temporary anchor says, I'll praise God and I'll believe God when everything is going right in my life. But your permanent anchor says, God, I'm here to stay. God, I know that everything in my life is, may not turn out the way that I want it to, but I know that, I know that you have my back. I know that you're not gonna leave me or forsake me. I know that your rod and your staff comforts me. I know, God, that I'll be able to withstand and you said, having done all, just stand. Stand still and see the very salvation of the Lord. Make a decision today. Make a decision today to put down <clears throat> this permanent anchor and make sure that it grips the solid rock. And that rock is Jesus. Amen and amen. Listen, if you desire to sow into Beyond Church, um, someone is putting that there uh, in the on the screen for you. Um, uh, we just, uh, should be there already. Um, I, we just want to uh, be able to continue to be a blessing to individuals, to be a blessing to, in, uh, to those. So go ahead and, if you would, uh, not find it robbery. Uh, we still believe in the principle of sowing and reaping. Uh, and so, but now this time, <clears throat> we just want to take a moment to give individuals an opportunity to be able uh, to put in uh, your prayer request. If you, if you need prayer, if you desire prayer, um, we want to pause now um, to do that with you. Uh, now again, we didn't, I didn't say for you. We want to do that with you. We want to pray with you. Um, and, um, and not only that, if Beyond Church has resonated with you, 
If you, if you believe that this is the place where you can be you overcoming your negativity daily, um, we invite you to become a member of Beyond Church. We do offer virtual membership for those that are in a, a different location other than the DMV. Um, but also, um, we do have physical church here uh, in Silver Spring, Maryland. And so once we're able to get back together, we would love for you um, to visit us, to be here with us. And so again, we offer this time for uh, a time of prayer. Just go ahead and type your prayer request in there. Um, or if you don't want to put the request, just say pray for me and we'll pray for you. Uh, because we believe that the Holy Spirit will uh, make intercession intercession with us with mumblings and groanings that we, uh, that we do not know. Uh, and so we know that God does hear, hear us. And um, again, if you desire to be a part of Beyond Church, you can, you can put that in there as well and say, hey, this is a wonderful service. Um, I think I want to be a part of Beyond Church. So we're just going to pause now, let the music play, and we want you to go ahead and uh, put in those requests. Father, it's at this hour that we need you. We need you, God. Oh, God, how we need you. Oh, Father, we're calling on your name now. We're calling on the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name, the name that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Father, we're calling on you now. We thank you, God. God, we thank you for the time of prayer. 
Father, we pray that if there's anything that's hindering that may be between you and us, Father, we give you full permission to remove it. God, so that our prayers will meet your very throne. Father, we continue to pray for the world even during this time. God, we thank you for unity all over the world. We thank you for unity in our communities. We thank you for unity in our churches. We thank you for unity in our family. We thank you for unity in our friends. Continue to unite us under your mighty hand. Father, we pray now for clarities of clarity of thought. Clarity of thoughts in our minds and in our hearts. God, that we would be able to focus, even in this time, and focus and grow. We thank you, God, that you are showing us something new. And Father, we are dependent upon you. For Father, we know that you can do all things but fail. We thank you for life. We thank you for health and we thank you for strength. God, we thank you now, God. Father, we thank you now, God, that we are placing down our permanent anchor. That no matter what comes, no matter what goes, no matter what happens, that we will stay right here with you daily in your presence. Daily lifting your name up. Daily in your word. Knowing that you're there with us and that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. God, we thank you for all of our essential workers. Bless them, God. Cover them with your blood in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you that policies are being written, that laws are being passed on their behalf. God, we pray now for the students that are in college, that are this has impacted them drastically. We just pray, God, that they don't have a home to go to. That God, that God, that you would touch their homes now. God, and everyone that is even in uh, in quarantine and isolation, God, it may not be good for everyone, but Father, we know that you're there even in the midst. God, help them to turn to you. And Father, we ask that you would be a very present help in the time of storm, in the time of trouble. God, we thank you for being the author and finisher of our faith. God, we need you more than ever. Touch now, God. Allow your spirit to rule and to reign. And Father, help us to remember that everything that we need is already on the inside of us. So Father, even now, right in this moment where we stand, sit, or lie. Father, we call forth everything on the inside of us. To help us to get through this storm of life. God, everything that you've equipped us and empowered us with, God. Father, we ask that your spirit would stand up on the inside of us. Oh, God, that wherever we go, that we shall bring light. Whatever we touch shall prosper. Wherever we go, God, you are there with us. Father, you said if we even made our bed in hell, there you would be with us. So, Father, we no longer operate in a lower level of consciousness or awareness. But, Father, we are, we offer our highest level of consciousness 
awareness that nothing will ever separate us from your love and that you are holding us in the palm of your hand and nothing will or can separate us no matter how violent the storms are, no matter how violent the winds are. Father, we know God that you're right there and that you're delivering us and that you've already set us free and pain and the God that even in the storm, we lift up our hands and we tell you, thank you. And we lift up our voices and we tell you how great you are. For we know that you can do it. And God, we lift you up and we honor you. For you are God all by yourself. We thank you for a great week. We thank you for good news. We thank you for a shifting in our very atmosphere. We thank you. And there's nothing that you're going to withhold from us. Because we walk upright and we're called according to your glory. Have thy way in and through our lives. He's the God who splits the seas of your circumstance. He takes you over. He takes you over. He takes you over. You don't have to swim through it. You can walk on water. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. He takes you over. He takes you over. Thank you, God. He takes you over. Say your name and through your power. In the consciousness of Christ Jesus. He takes you over. Hallelujah! Thank you, God. That it is so. So it is. And so we let it be. That your enemies are gonna drown. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I just need a new worshiper. Thank you all so much for being a part of our worship experience. We thank you that God is ruling. That God is reigning. God is ruling and God is reigning. Thank you so much. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you're there. And if I make my bed in hell, be hell, behold, you are there. Amen and amen. Listen, God bless you. Let's have a great week on purpose. And remember, let's put down that permanent anchor. Get rid of that temporary one. Let's put down this permanent anger because God is going to see us through this because he's seen us through things in the past. Whatever you're going through in your life, be sure that your anchor is holding and it's your permanent anger is gripping the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. Listen, let's go and grow beyond together. We'll talk to you on Wednesday.